Let's take a closer look how our tape grips and elevates the skin to improve fluid transfer through the whole body. When we look inside the body to address how SpiderTech can help decrease congestion, it's important to remember that the congestion typically comes from the muscle layer below, whether it's bruising, swelling, inflammation, and pushes up into the skin above. The ways that SpiderTech can help relieve this pressure, the tape goes on the skin, retracts back on itself, elevates the skin, creating an accordion pattern, and decompressing the area, creating more space above the muscle and below the skin. So not only the interstitial space, but the both layers of fascia get lifted and decompressed. We know that this is going to open up the lymphatic vessels due to the fact that lymphatic vessels have connection to the skin through anchoring filaments. So not only do we have more space, but those lymphatic vessels are being pried open to allow fluid to move in and out. The second way that SpiderTech helps with lymphatic drainage is using our fan spider. The fan spider has an alternating pattern of tape and no tape. The area that has tape on it relieves the pressure as it elevates the skin. The area that doesn't have tape still has a high pressure area. Fluid will flow from the area of high pressure to the area of low pressure where the tape is, out of the area towards the heart. In our first study, a 2020 study out of England, we look at healthy people. And we look at does kinesiology tape versus white medical tape lift and elevate the skin to increase the interstitial space below the skin and above the superficial layer of fascia. For the white medical tape, they use zinc oxide and for kinesiology tape, they applied on the calf. And what did they find? They found that right away, there was an 11% increase in the distance of the interstitial space. And after 24 hours, that number went to 16%. The second study we'll look at today is at a Turkey in 2015 and they evaluated the effect on kinesiology tape after an acute injury. They dropped a 55 gram ball from a little over a meter onto a rat's thigh. That became the experimental group and the healthy thigh became the control group. So after 30 minutes, there was a 34% increase in the distance between the skin and the superficial fascia layer. After six hours, what they found was there was a two and a half times difference in that distance. They also found that in that period of time, there was no longer any blood in the area and the lymphocytes in the area had, had completely disappeared. They also found that the area where the swelling happened had got bigger and spread out. Interestingly, they also found that the nerve growth factor had decreased. This is what would sensitize the nerves and create pain for the rat. They also found that all the collagen fibers underneath the tape were completely preserved. What we can extrapolate from this is that there is no need for scar tissue formation because there is no tissue breakdown. Our third study looks at the effect of kinesiology tape on exercise-induced muscle damage. In this study, they looked at a control group that had no tape versus an experimental group that had tape on before the workout during the workout and for 24 hours after the workout. They then evaluated recovery over four days after that. To create the muscle damage, they used an eccentric pr protocol on the bicep. And what they found was that in the kinesiology tape group, there was seven and a half times less creatine kinase present compared to the control group, indicating the, the decrease or the lack of muscle breakdown. They also looked at strength recovery, pain level, and, and return range of motion. In the strength recovery group, the no tape after four days saw a 65% return to recovery. In the tape group, they saw a 93% increase in recovery, almost 100% return to pre-test levels. In the pain group, they used a visual anal analog scale and there was still a 4.4 out of 10 in the no tape group where the tape group was down to 0.9 out of 10, almost completely back to no pain level. In terms of range of motion, the tape group saw a 12% increase in range of motion after four days. What they concluded was that the tape being on before the workout started helped the body reduce the amount of creatine kinase because there wasn't much muscle breakdown as a result of the, of the workout. In addition, the tape being on 24 hours after the workout led to less pooling of swelling, less pooling of fluid, and a better recovery. This is why I tell all my athletes, if you know you're gonna have a hard workout or a hard training session, you're better off having tape on before you start and then continue wearing it through the night into the following day.